You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. All right, guys and girls, Gaming Yaps here. Thanks for clicking, it's much appreciated. Why Call of Duty Black Ops, you say? As you all know, I love the campaigns, and I'm going to tell you why you should be playing this campaign in 2022. Not the multiplayer, though. Fuck that shit. Well, let's have a sit down for a yarn. I haven't played Black Ops in a long time, and I've forgotten most of what happens. Until recently, when I sat down and smashed through this bad boy in five or so hours. The concept of this game about brainwashing is very cool. Crosses the line of reality and fiction. Ooh, MKUltra anyone? These types of games inspire you to learn history and see how much is true or based off real events. <coughs> MKUltra. This game when released was a bridge from World War II games to the modern warfare games as this was set in the Cold War era, featuring Vietnam era missions but also a throwback to a World War II mission. It is very unique when comparing to other cults as it goes down a very dark path, which is super interesting, cool, and engaging. We start at the main menu, and to me, this looks fantastic. We are confronted with a bunch of TVs with real footage on them of conflicts, famous people, and scenarios that happened just like World at War, and two people staring at you from the shadows. Probably one of the best menus I've seen, and when you finally work out you can get out of your chair and fuck around on the computer, you visit a total of eight different countries over 15 missions, murdering everyone in your path, and it's hella fun and engaging. I'll try my best to avoid spoilers, but there could be a few minor spoilers. But if you haven't played this game yet, just do it. Like yesterday, now, tomorrow, just go buy it. We start the first mission with a seamless transition from the menu to interrogation and then a flashback to Cuba. Boom! Castro is dead and you're the one who pulled the trigger. The balls to start this game like this? Oh, You're there with your mates Woods and Bowman. More on them later. As the mission loads, it marks out your mission details with a black texter. The immersion here is cranking making you feel like you're a part of a secret black ops task force? The game throws you back in time and then you think it's going to set you off on a chronological story of how Mason got into this seat. But no, there are flashbacks, forwards, sideways, oh and the numbers. 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. No, no that's not right. 7, 19, 20, 10, 14. Ah, you get the gist. Rolling around in Mason's head, about to explode through his eye sockets. What the hell is going on, you might ask yourself? We then follow Mason, walking through the Pentagon. Holy shit, the horny President JFK is here. It flashes, you twist and turn, you try to kill him, but you don't. Really now, what the hell is going on here? This scenario starts to show you Mason is losing the plot. But before all this happens, we are in prison being shouted at by our mate Reznov. Right. Won't you tell everybody what the fuck you gotta say? This is step one! Secure the keys! We escape with his help and the uprising of the jailbirds. You got knocked the fuck out! But not before hearing a haunting message. Victory cannot be achieved without sacrifice, Mason. We Russians know this better than anyone. The way he says Mason is just like how he used to say, Yes, Dimitri. Time to hunt down the last remnants of the fascist Reich. Oh man, this is fan service. It's delivered so well. If you don't know who these two people are, go and play Call of Duty World at War now. Come on, go, go, go. So you have to restore Mason's mind while living through memories of the dangerous exploits of his former life with his mates Woods and Bowman. Good to see you, Alex. Jason Hudson, CIA. We're here to talk about your encounter with Russians and Laos. We got word of defecting, I think. The supporting cast here are phenomenal, so likeable with great personalities. New COD games don't have the same engaging, lovable characters, except for maybe... You think I'm a monster? That's only because you don't have the conviction to do what's necessary. I did, however, shed a tear when the dude died in Infinite Warfare. Spoiler alert. Yeah, he's so memorable I forgot his name. Must be some kind of setup. Nova 6 is all gone. See here? Map it area. Woods is a strong character helping you through very tough situations, and Bowman is great. Why do I know his voice? You don't scare me. You communist pizza. And if you're wondering why the Ice Cube music and Friday movie references? 
he voices Bowman. <laughs> Even all the way up to his untimely oh, death. Even perspective of the main character is tweaked a bit for a more immersive feel. So what I mean by that is while you play as Mason as the main character, it switches on you to see gameplay through other characters' eyes looking at Mason, really delving into the idea that Mason sees himself differently to the other characters. So when you bust into the science compound later in the game to kill Steiner, the attention to detail here is incredible. I'm running through as Mason and I shoot this monkey. And while Reznov is killing Steiner, you can see people trying to break the glass. Then they pull a switcheroo and you are the people who are breaking the glass trying to stop Mason and you stare at him on the floor after knocking him down. Quite compelling really. Also take note, the same monkey I shot with Mason is dead when old mate runs through. So good. The graphics still hold up in my eyes. A bit jerky but still looks great. The sound is absolutely astounding. Shot that one! Enemy down! The gun sounds are awesome. And the classic 60s rock featured are great. Good to see they bought the licensing for the songs to use them. The game is still a linear format, but this is COD. And at this stage, it works very well. Oh, the mission when you're a pilot and you have to guide your team through the snow. And then when they get confronted, it zooms down and you become the dude in the gunfight. Brilliant. The devs are just throwing quirky ideas at you at this point. More moments to get your hair standing up on end and to make you play this game in 2022 is going down the river with your American army in Vietnam, you have troops running on the banks, or the helicopters flying over top, killing everything in sight, with a classic Vietnam era song, Sympathy for the Devil, playing from the radio on your boat. All class. I genuinely blew in my pants when this happened. Huge Rolling Stones fan here. And this just is the best moment in COD history for me. You control the whole boat. You drive. You shoot the machine guns. You launch the rockets. So good. All while singing. So I have to pause this and pretend I'm reacting to the song or the bots will find me and not allow this. But I suppose I am reacting to it. Just trying to get round fair use because I ain't buying no licensing. Also I can keep this dope scene in this video. The song suits this scene like heroin to a junkie. The guitar solo towards the end while destroying buildings with rockets is next level fun. All within campaign. No multiplayer necessary. Don't get me wrong, multiplayer is great, but the feels just ain't there as you would know if you watched my other videos. This scene sums it up for me when it comes to enjoyment out of a campaign single player story. All the pieces work together in this game to form one tight, neatly wrapped package, which everyone needs to play through at least once in their life. I am now going to list adjectives, describing words, for this campaign. Immersive, captivating, charismatic, intense, brutal, magnetic, compelling, and awesome. If this sounds like your cup of tea, get your asses to the shop and go get it. If you have to buy a PS3 or an Xbox, go do it. It's the best. You have to play it. I can't believe today was a good day. Thanks for watching if you got this far and like and subscribe for more content like this. And oh yeah, the villain does get fucked with no Vaseline.